wine, too. Yeah, here you go. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Thank you. It's such an honor to bring forth the word this morning. I don't take it lightly. It, it, to me, it's an honor. You know, a lot of times when I bring forth a message, it's something that the Lord has been dealing with me. That happens all the time. Well, he's been dealing with me about soaking in his presence. Uh, and, and, you know, soaking is, uh, you know, uh, uh, it could mean resting in his presence. It could be a different name. It could be abiding. It could be waiting or tearing in his presence. You know, but anyway, so that's what the Lord wants me to minister on today. You know, a lot of people have the worship down packed. Mm -hmm. They have the prayer down packed. But sitting in the presence of the Lord, that's what he wants afterwards, after you're done. A lot of times, even me, you're, you know, you worship, you're in the word, you worship, you pray, and you get up and go. No, 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 you're not waiting in his presence to see what he has to say. We're so used to just getting up and go. I'm not saying everybody, mm -hmm. but you know, somebody needs to hear this. That's why the Lord wanted me to bring it forth, okay? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today is soaking in the presence of the Lord. Yes, Lord. And it isn't something new. Believers years ago have been doing this. They've been marinating in the presence of God. <laughs> you know, Smith Wigglesworth said, he talked about abiding in the presence of God. So see, it, it's been, you know, it's been done, you know, but the Lord just wants me to bring this forth. Amen. You know, uh, when you soak, it's like you're marinating a steak. You mar the, the marinade gets inside the fibers of the meat and it flavors it and it tenderizes it. So that's what the Lord wants us to do is to spend time in his presence. Because when we spend time in his presence, he changes us. He transforms us. You know, I always used to hear this, you know, uh, in Spanish, I'll say it in Spanish and in, in English. In Spanish, it says, Dime con quien andas y te digo quien eres. Let me know you, who you hang around with and I'll tell you who you are. You see, so the more that we spend time in the presence of the Lord, he starts to change us and we become more like Jesus. So you know what I'm saying? So that's what he wants. You know, I... I uh, have, have several books here. One of them is Sam Hinn. He's Benny Hinn's brother, for those that, that don't know. He did a book called Changed in His Presence. I could not put the book down. That was years ago, but that's a very good book, you know, to read. Another one is uh, Carol Arnott. Her and her husband, John, were the leaders of the Toronto Outpouring in, in, in Canada. And, uh, you know, she's got a book out that's called Soaking in the Spirit, okay? Awesome book. And, uh, you know, she talks about this kind of uh, soaking uh, prayer brings healing. People have gotten healed from just being in the presence of the Lord. You know, you can hear his voice more clearly. And you can experience his love like never before. You know, the Lord wants us to take time, you know, just like a relationship. You have to take time with that relationship. If it's important, if, if it matters to you, if it's important, you're gonna do something. You have to be consistent, okay? And Jesus was our greatest example of somebody that would spend time with a father. And we're gonna, we're gonna see that in, uh, in scripture. But like I was telling you that you become like the one that you hang around with. If you remember the disciples, the, after he had ascended, the religious people knew that they were unlearned men, but yet they knew that they had been with Jesus mm -hmm. by the way they acted, what they did, how they spoke, how they carried themselves. They knew that they had been with Jesus, okay? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You know, things happen when you're in the presence of the Lord. Doesn't he say that there's a refreshing that comes when you're in his presence? Amen. He gives you rest when you're in his presence. Things happen. People can, people can tell that you've been around the Lord. You know, I remember, because I do expressive worship, and I had gone to this meeting, and there were chaplains there and everything. We were volunteers to the juvenile home. We were volunteers. And uh, the chaplain, you know, it's not, it, wasn't, it wasn't me. It was the Lord, because I do practice, 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 practice. You're in the presence of the Lord as you're practicing worship, you know. 
And, uh, you know, the chaplain saw me walk in and she says, who is she? Who's that? Who's that? And later uh, I found out that she could tell that I had been in the presence of the Lord. You don't even know. But just being in the presence of the Lord, people can tell. Yes, you know? And then I have an illustration here that I love to use. Okay? Um, in Song of Solomon 2.1, the Lord says, I am the Rose of Sharon, okay? There's really a place called Sharon in Palestine. And in those days, they were, they were uh, growing flowers there. That This Rose Sharon, it, it's a flower. And it releases its fragrance. And if you were there and happened to leave that place and went somewhere else, people knew that you had been there because you carried the fragrance. That's the way it is with the Lord. The more time that we spend with the Lord, we carry his fragrance. Do you remember what happened to Moses when he was up there with the Lord for 40 days on Mount Sinai? He had a glow about him that it even scared the people. So he had to put a veil on. Like I said, things happen in the presence of the Lord. So what is the picture that the Lord is trying to paint for us here today? I know we're, we're all at different levels spiritually. But even those that have already arrived, he wants more. Deep calleth unto deep. Mm -hmm. he, we can never arrive. We keep growing. We, yeah. He wants us to go higher and higher and higher. Okay? Yeah. So it's for all of us at different levels. Amen. Okay, my uh, next scripture is in Psalms 46.10. It says, be still and know that I am God. We often forget to spend time Okay, we often forget to spend as much time listening as we do talking. A lot of times we do all the talking, but he wants us to listen. He wants us to listen. That's why sometimes he has, in our dreams, the Lord speaks to us. Not, he, not that he doesn't speak to us in our dreams, he does. But a lot of times he can't get a hold of you because you're so busy during the day that he has to speak to you in dreams. Okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In other words, when you get in his presence, you just relax. Turn out the, uh, turn out the phone, you know, just get, get alone with him, you know, just be alone with him, concentrate, and just focus on him, put like music, worship music, and just concentrate, stay focused on him. I know your mind's gonna wonder, okay, now what am I gonna cook for dinner? Oh, I gotta clean the house, I gotta do this. No, bring your mind back and stay focused on the Lord. He wants you to stay focused on Okay, okay, so here we go. Um, my next scripture is like I was telling you that Jesus was our greatest example. He would spend a lot of time with the Father, okay? And we're going to read it here in scripture. You know, he is, uh, remember that the word of God says that we're to imitate him. He's our example. Everything he did, he did it by example. He was, uh, he was the servant leader. He led by example. Okay, so let's see what the word of God says. What is the picture that God is painting us for us here today? And remember that scripture interprets scripture. My first one is in Matthew 4, 22 through 23. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. While he sent the people home, after sending them home, he went up to the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Him being the son of God, God himself did this. How much more do we need to do this? Okay. Okay, my, my next one is in Mark 1, 35 through 36. Before daybreak, the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. And uh, my next one, my, my messages aren't long, but I believe that we're going to get what the Lord is trying to tell us here today. Okay? Amen. In Luke 5, 16, it says, So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. In the Greek, it means Jesus habitually withdrew for prayer. It was a habit that he did it all the time. He would take his time and he would go up there and pray. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next scripture is going to be in Luke 16, 12 through 13. One day soon afterwards, Jesus went up to the mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. 
At daybreak, he called together all his disciples, and he chose 12 of them to be apostles. See, sometimes in critical, uh, for something uh, critical events, Jesus prayed before that. Here, he, he had to choose the 12, the 12 apostles, okay? So he spent that time seeking the Lord, seeking his will. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. You know, he was, so we have to be obedient. If Jesus did it, we have to do it, okay? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, a quote here by A.W. Tozer that says, The footprint of an obedient sheep is always found within the larger footprint of the shepherd. Okay, let me say that again. The footprint of an obedient sheep is always found within the larger footprint of the shepherd. See, we're supposed to follow Jesus' example, okay? Okay, another one was David. You know, remember that he was referred to as a man after God's own heart. In Psalm 63, 1, it says, Oh God, you are my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee, my flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is, where there is no water. Okay? <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, so my next one is going to be in Matthew 6, 6. This is Jesus. I have two, uh, two translations. Because if I can find a translation that really explains it, I will use it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, 6, it says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into your closet, and then shut the door and pray to your Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. Okay? So what I did was I looked up the same one in the message, and this is what it says. Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so that you won't be tempted to role play before God. This is in the message, okay? It says, just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage, and the focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense his grace, Okay? So see, it's telling you, just, you know, get away, you know. Okay. My next scripture is in Psalms 91. It says, Psalms 91.1, it says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Here where it says to dwell means to live. And here where it says here, it says uh, to abide means to continue, to continue. And I'm an illustration, and so I like to use illustrations, okay? At the end of my message, what we're going to do is we're going to take some time, and we're going to soak before the Lord, okay? Yeah. Maybe some of you have been doing it good. It's fine. But maybe some of you haven't, mm -hmm. and this is to get you started, okay? We're going to do this afterwards. Okay, uh, I have an illustration here by Susanna Wesley. John Wesley's mother had a lot of kids, and she couldn't get away. So what she would do is that she would get her apron and cover her head like this. Or she would go like this. She would cover her head, and the kids knew to behave when she was in the secret place. That's, that was her closet. That was her secret place. She would just cover up her head. That kind of reminds me of the rabbis with the talit. They had it on, and they would just close their talit, and they would pray. That was their, that was their secret place. In other words, intimacy is experienced in the secret place. Just as a bride and a bridegroom know each other in an intimate way. Intimacy. Into me, you see. Let me say that again. Intimacy. Into me, you see. Heidi Baker once said, and she's one that really talks a lot about soaking too. A lot of these, you know. Heidi Baker always, always says, all fruitfulness flows from intimacy. All fruitfulness flows from intimacy. <clears throat> we spend time with the Lord first, and then we do the work. Because we have to do what pleases Him. Okay? And we'll get into that further. In other words, we have to make spending time with the Lord first priority. That's our first priority. He's a God of first fruits. He will not take second place to anybody. He's got to be number one. He gave us his best. He expects the best from us. Okay? When something is important, 
to you, you make time for it. Let me say that again. When something is important to you, you make time for it. Okay? So my next scripture is at 1 Chronicles 16, 11. It says, study God and his strength. Seek his presence day and night. You know that? I, I remembered a book by Brother Lawrence. And it's called, some of you might already know about the book or read it. It's called Practicing the Presence of God. It was talking about this monk from the 1700s in, in, uh, in a French monastery. You know, he enjoyed practicing the presence of God. He'd be washing the dishes and, and he could, you know, God's presence was there. He was cleaning and, and God was there. He enjoyed the presence of God. Okay, that's another good one if you want to, if you want to read that. The Lord has always called us to come. To come. He's always telling us to come to him. Look at the, the Lord told Moses to go uh, to Mount Sinai and spend. He spent 40 days with him. He wanted him to come and be there with him. Mm -hmm. Another good example of somebody that spent time with the Lord was Enoch. That's one of my favorite examples. And you can find that in Genesis 5, 21 through 24. When Enoch was 65 year, years old, he became the father of Methuselah. After birth of Methuselah, Enoch lived in a close fellowship with God for another 300 years. And he had sons and daughters. Enoch lived 365 years. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Then one day he disappeared because God took him. In, a, in other words, they couldn't find him. He never died. He just took him. He pleased him so much, he took him. And you can go down here to Hebrews 11.5. It says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death but, and was not found because God had taken him. For, because before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Yeah. That's got to be our number one priority is to please God. Okay? Okay, so thank you, Lord. You know, that, that portrays intimacy. He pleased God. Okay, when I was doing this, the Lord brought this to my remembrance, Esther, okay? Example, Esther. In Esther 2.15, Esther was the daughter of Abihail, who was Mordecai's uncle. Mordecai had adopted his younger cousin, Esther. When it was Esther's turn to go to the king, she accepted the uh, advice of Haggai, the eunuch, in charge of the harem. She asked for nothing except what he suggested. She was admired by everyone who saw her. So this was a time where the king was looking for a queen. So what he did was he got a lot of the virgins from the area, and they had to prepare them before they went in to see the king. That was 12 months of preparation. But when it came to that time that they were gonna go in, the eunuch would allow them to go into this chamber where they had beautiful clothes and jewelry and perfumes and everything to go in before the king, but not Esther. Esther went to the eunuch and, and, and asked him, what does the king like? What pleases the king? So she put on whatever it was that pleased him, so when she, was, she went in, we all know, she, she got chosen to be queen. But see, she wasn't pleasing herself. She wanted to see what he liked. And like I said, Jesus was our greatest example. In John 8, 29, this is Jesus. He said, and he sent, he says, he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do the things that please him. You see that? Mm -hmm. He is our greatest example. You know, we want to be in God's perfect will. There, there is, you know, you can be in God's permissive will. But there's also God's perfect will. I want to be in his perfect will. Yeah. Thank you, Father. You know, I had read this example, and I've said it before, that Kenneth Hagin, some of you know who he was, mighty man of God, has gone home to be with the Lord. When he first started out, he was pastoring in Texas. He pastored for 15 years in Texas. So when he was done, he decided to go and start just teaching on faith. Okay. And the Lord tells him, you are, you are now entering your first phase of ministry. What? I've been pastoring for 15 years. And he said, you are now entering your first phase of ministry. 
Because see, there is a thing as being in God's permissive will and being in God's perfect will. I want to be in God's perfect will. Okay, what is uh, Matthew saying? Uh, Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Jesus said unto him, the great commandment, he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So if you love the Lord, what are you going to do? You're going to do what pleases him. In other words, you know, please him above his work. Please him. He comes first, and then you do the work. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's not interested in the work. He's interested in you. And you please in him, that's what he wants. Okay, in Luke 9, 23, this is Jesus. He said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. In other, in other words, the cross means self-denial. You know, well, this is what I want. This is me. Oh, this is what I want. No, Lord, what do you want? What do you want me to do? What do you, in other words, surrender. Lord, what is it that you want? We have to be willing to deny ourselves, to abandon ourselves for him. In other words, we, uh, we need to die to our desires, our dreams. We're not our own. We've been bought with a price. You no longer belong to you. Amen. We belong to him. Everything that we have belongs to him. Amen. Everything. Amen. Our families, our money, everything belongs to him. It no longer belongs to us. We belong to him, so we have to glorify him with our lives. We have to glorify him. He's a God of first fruits. He has to be number one. He will not take second place to anybody. I know. I came from there. I, I, I came from there before I was saved, when I was married. I was, you know, I was my first time being married, and I, my, my ex-husband was my God. Hey, I know I've been there. And I had to learn, and I went through hell. I had, I went to hell, through hell, to find out, no, you will never put anybody, your family, anybody, man, before God. He's got to be number one. He will not take second place to anybody. Amen. No. Some of you have to learn the hard way. You have to hit rock bottom to find out, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have to learn. No, nobody, nobody comes before God. He's got to be number one. In other words, he must increase and we must decrease. Yes. That's all there is to it. No way around it. Mm -hmm. He's got to be number one. Colossians uh, 3, 1, it says, Since you were bought back to Christ, focus on the things above, where Christ holds the highest position. Keep your mind, keep your mind on things above, not on worldly things. He wants us to stay focused on him. You know, remember, we're just passing through. This is not our home. We're just passing through. He wants us to stay focused. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He's a God of first fruits. What does it say uh, in Psalms? It says, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. Isaiah says, he will keep your mind in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him. You see, everything is him. It's got to be him. Mm -hmm. What is this? Uh, what Jesus says in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. To abide means staying, waiting, remaining. In other words, to continue for a long time, enduring, you know, to continue. And the Lord tells us, you know, he says, come. He's always asking us to come. In Isaiah 118, I have two tr uh, uh, translations for you. It says, come, let us reason together, says the Lord. He tells you, come. In other words, remind me of my word. Come, state your case, that you may be acquitted. He wants to hear from you. And, uh, you know, and I say, uh, in, in uh, the message, it says, come, sit down. Let's argue it out. This is God's. Uh, this is God, God's message. And doesn't He say, "Come boldly to the throne of grace"? He tells us, "Come, come boldly." In Song of Solomon four seven, it says, "You are, are altogether beautiful, my darling, beautiful in every way. Come what, with me from Lebanon, my bride. Remember that Jesus is the groom. We are the bride, guys. Even men are the bride. Okay." 
We need to spend that time alone with him. We need to. In Jeremiah 2.31, it says, Oh, people, listen to the words of the Lord. Does a young woman forget her jewelry? Does the bride hide her wedding dress? Yet for years on end, my people have forgotten me. They have forgotten me. I'm not saying everybody, but maybe there is somebody out there that needs to hear this. Okay? And that reminded me of Revelation 2.4. But this is what I have against you. You have left your first love. What did, you, what did you used to do when you first got saved? And you were so in love with God. Man, you, you could tell everybody. I mean, you were just glowing, you know. You know, what's the difference now? What happened? Have you left your first love? Even if you're a Christian, we can kind of put him on the back burner. Oh, no. He says, turn from your sins and do, and do what you did at first. He's telling you, repent, come back, and do what you used to do. You know, uh, there's a prophet named uh, Hakeem Collins. Some of you might have heard his name. And he says, to hear from God, you have to be close to him. Amen. To hear from God, you have to be close to him. And this gives me another illustration that I like. If you remember that Jesus loved all his disciples, all of them, but there was one that was referred to as the disciple that Jesus loved, and that was John. Do you know why? Because when they were all sitting there, John was always right next to him. And he would put his head on his shoulder. And then he could hear his heart. Do you know that they all could have done it? But he's the only one that cho chose to do it. So that's why he was referred to uh, John the Beloved, the disciple that Jesus loved. Okay? What does it say in Jeremiah 29? Uh, 13 through 14, and I have two different translations. It says, if you look for me with all your heart, you will find me, and I will be found by you, says the Lord. I looked it up in the message, and this is what it says. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and want it more than anything else. Let me say that again. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me, and want it more than anything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have another one here with two different translations. That's uh, <clears throat> it's James 4, 8. It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. He, see, he wants us to do it first. And we're to draw near to him and he's going to draw near to us. Okay. Yeah. How much of God do we want? It's all up to you. Okay, uh, so, you know, things happen when we're in the presence of the Lord. Remember I was telling you that there's a refreshing that comes from being in his presence? Uh, in Matthew eleven twenty-eight, 28, the Lord says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says he gives us rest. In other words, <clears throat> when you, uh, it says God wants to connect with us. We have to make it a habit like Jesus did. We have to make it a habit. Then you will receive strength, you will receive joy, and you will receive faith. Okay? And a refreshing. In other words, you have to make time, just like in a relationship that matters, we have to be consistent. Okay? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And like I was talking about soaking, you know, soaking, what you do is you just shut all the noise out and just focus on Him. I found this quote that says, we are to allow our bodies to reflect our hearts. We are, to bow, we are to bow down in humility before God. Let me say that again. We are to allow our body to reflect our heart. We are to bow down in humility before God. In other words, if we want to increase in faith, we have to make it a, a, our first priority to spend time with God. It's important for spiritual growth. Even if you start with 10 minutes a day, just sit there and be quiet. You don't have to talk. Just sit there in his presence. You know, just like except, like those that have been uh, mar are married or have been married or something, you know, you're sitting in the living room, your husband's watching the football game, maybe you're not, that's not your, but you're sitting there crocheting. You're not even saying anything. Just being in each other's presence. Mm -hmm. 
you know? You don't even have to say anything. He says, be silent, be still, and know that I am God, okay? Okay, so let me see what the next one is. We're coming to a close. Okay, what it was, what I told you that in Acts 3, <laughs> then times of refreshment come from the presence of the Lord. If we spend time, sometimes we're going through things. We're going through depression or you're, you're grieving or you're going through things, you know. And all you have to do is get away and spend that time with him. He'll give you the rest and the strength and the refreshment that you need. He lives inside of you. God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead lives inside of you. One of my teachers used to say, you know what? He thinks he's God because he is. He is God. The third person of the Godhead lives inside of us. In other words, we get spiritual uh, strength from waiting on the Lord. What is my last scripture? Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, and do you know that something about an eagle that I've learned because I did a message on the eagle, that when that uh, eagle needs healing or strength, they'll go up high into the mountain and they'll stand on a rock and they'll allow the rays of the sun to just, you know, you know, just to hit them on their wings and they absorb the rays of the sun. They stay there. And do you know that they renew their strength? They do. They, they get healing from that. And they get strong from that. So how much more we get spiritual strength from spending time with the Lord? Not only that, as you become more filled with the Holy Spirit, you can minister to others out of the overflow. What did Heidi Baker say? All fruitfulness flows from intimacy. All fruitfulness flows from intimacy. I remember, uh, I know Ruth Heflin. I know, who, I know that you know who the lady was, Ruth Heflin. Mighty woman of God's gone home to be with the Lord. But I remember that she was in Israel, and I was, uh, I was reading one of her books. And, you know, for some reason, they couldn't go out and hand out tracts and, and tell people about the Lord. And the Lord said, worship me. Worship me. So as she worshiped the Lord, because she was a dancer. And she was always dancing before the Lord, and so was her mother. She was a dancer. The Lord said, worship me. So as she was worshiping God, God was touching people all over. The glory of God was falling on people because she was worshiping God. That's why Heidi Baker says, all truthfulness flows from intimacy. You take care of him, he's going to take care of the other things. He's got to be first. He'll take care of that. And uh, here in Matthew, I know said that I said that was the last one. This is the last one. Okay, Matthew seven twenty two through twenty three. It says, "Many of you say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? In the name we've cast out devils, and in, in thy name we've done wonderful works. Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, knew you, knew you, or knowing somebody is intimacy. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity." You know what I'm saying? So, hey, the, what is the Lord telling us here today? And my summary and closing is, remember that Jesus is our greatest example, that we're to follow his example. If he did it, we need to do it, okay? Number two, remember that Jesus has to be our first priority, Priority. okay? Okay, and then uh, the next one is, uh, when we draw close to him, he draws close to us. We are to pick, our, uh, pick up our cross daily. Remember that there's a refreshing that comes from being in the presence of the Lord. Okay? And remember that we are changed in his presence. And last but not least, we are always to do what pleases him. Even before, even before the work, he wants us to please him. Remember the story of Martha and Mary? Okay? Remember that Mary was sitting at his feet and Martha was busy cooking and, and getting everything ready for them, which was good. She was going to serve them and everything. And she says, are you going to have, have her come and help me? And he says, no, she has chosen the best thing and it will not be taken from her. The Lord was happy with what she did by sitting at his feet. Okay. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pray over the message, and then I'm going to do a salvation prayer. And then after that, we're going to take uh, some minutes to, to soak a little bit, okay? So we're going to pray over the message. Lord, we are so grateful for your word. Thanking you for reminding us of your word. Seal that word in our hearts, and we will be doers of the word and not hearers only, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, that we may hide it in our heart, that we will not sin against you. Lord, we thank you for reminding us, Lord, that you come first, even before your word, even before, even before your, uh, even before your word, Lord, you come first, and we thank you for it, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Now, if there's somebody out there that you've never accepted Jesus in your heart, I'd like to do this before I close my messages. All you have to do is uh, just say, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. 